The dust is back. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas, and in this video, we are going to be talking about really the first big plume of Saharan dust to push off the African continent so far this dust slash hurricane season. We're going to break that down, talk about where it is, where it's going. Then we're really going to head into the Caribbean. There is going to be a pretty big flood threat for the western side of the Caribbean. Cuba, parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, into Jamaica, the Yucatan Peninsula. We're going to break all that down for you over the next few days, over the next few minutes here. And then, of course, we're going to give you a wide view here. A big tropical update for you for the rest of the Atlantic Basin. Hurricane Center is watching one area. And then further down the road, we're going to go over the next week or two to talk about if there's going to be anything bubbling up. If you are interested in just skipping ahead, I'm going to have the chapters listed in the description so that you can click on that and find what you want to find. First things first, we are going to talk about the dust. And before I get into this, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather this hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. And also, if you find this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so here we go. It's not a ton of dust, but it is here. You might notice the sky is becoming hazy in the parts of the Dominican Republic, certainly in Puerto Rico. Again, the brighter the color is here on the scale up top, that represents where we have that more dense concentration of dust and you kind of see that streaming in there from the atlantic moving into the leeward and windward islands trinidad and tobago we are seeing that the abc islands as well and then through the lesser antilles we are seeing some of that dust now into the future here here's the deal with this we have a couple of weather systems that are going to kind of sweep up this dust and then slide it back out to sea so you see what happens as i put this into motion we're going to zoom in this is the upcoming Friday now. We're going to go out over the next 10 days to show you that there is a secondary push of dust coming off of Africa. But you see, by Friday, that is going to be a little bit later on in this week, of course. That's going to be Friday, June 9th. The dust kind of dissipates a little bit. You see that big area of high pressure? That would be right here. I'm kind of drawing it, and that's going to sweep it up and put it towards Bermuda, maybe getting into eastern Cuba by Friday. Taking this further out, we kind of lose some of the dust in the Caribbean, and then it comes back. So here we go. This is going to be a week from Friday now. So this is going to be 10 days out. You see we have more dust coming in. Again, the concentration isn't that thick, but we're going to notice it. It might be just enough to really enhance the sunrises and sunsets for us in the Leeward, Windward Islands, through Puerto Rico, into Hispaniola. Note here these arrows here. We have a big chunk of high pressure. That's going to be sitting right about there. That dust is going to ride that in, so we might be able to get some of that dust this time around. Again, 10 days from now, towards Florida, maybe into the southeast coast before it kind of heads back out to sea. So that is something that we are going to watch. Saharan dust is probably the biggest catch-22. There's some good with it. There is some really bad with it. We're going to start with the positive first. We're going to go with the good. The first thing is, this time of the year, there's a lot of it out there. That's one of the reasons why... Hurricane season is typically on the quieter season when it gets start started. We have a lot of dust in May, June, July, kind of making that trip across. Once we get to August and September, that dust activity kind of pipes down a little bit and stays closer to the African continent. So we like it because that dry, dusty air mass helps to limit tropical activity. They want that very moist atmosphere. I know everybody hates that word, but that's what they want. They want that very high humidity so those thunderstorms can really develop. The other thing, we talked about this for the Leeward, Windward Islands into Puerto Rico, our sunrises and sunsets are really good anyway, but when you have enough of that dust particle matter 15 to 20,000 feet above your head, it really does help to even enhance the sunrise and sunsets. You get that nice orange glow out there. The other positive thing, it fertilizes the Amazon rainforest as all of the nitrogen and all of the phosphorus from that dust comes over. It really helps to do that now. While it's fertilizing the Amazon rainforest, it's also fertilizing some of that, those algal blooms, the seaweed that's out there, the sargasm out there. And that's what we start to see things contribute to red tide. So it also helps to fertilize the junk that we see out in the Atlantic that moves ashore on our beaches in the Caribbean and into Florida and the southeast coast and to the Gulf Coast as well. So that's part of the bad. If it's thick enough, most of the time that dust is suspended way above your head and it does not mess with air quality. But when it's thick enough, we've seen this a couple of years now for the past couple of years. We've had some pretty nasty air quality, especially in the Caribbean. And then, of course, when it rains, when you have rain meeting up with that dust, it'll leave little spots on your car. So if you've seen that over the past couple of years, that is likely because of the Saharan dust. 
All right. So that is kind of infiltrating the Eastern Caribbean. It's one of the reasons why our rain chances are going to be going down over the next few days, really for Puerto Rico into the Leeward, Windward Islands. We are concerned with, though, the Western Caribbean, really from Central America into Jamaica, through Cuba, and then into the Bahamas because of a persistent system. It's kind of hanging out right here, but we are going to see the rain spread up from it. Now, the deal with this is you see that rain really continuing. Notice how we have sunshine from Puerto Rico through the Lesser Antilles. But look at all the rain continuing into Cuba, into parts of Jamaica. And that really stays with us. This is Friday now at noon, even now getting into the Bahamas, South Florida, Western Cuba, Central Cuba, into the Cayman Islands. We are going to see that rain. And you see all that continues all the way through the weekend. So this is now going through Sunday at 8 o'clock. We're starting to see things quiet down a little bit, but we do still have some rain in western Cuba. So again, the flood threat that we were advertising right off the top of this video is really going to be tied to the western Caribbean. Again, you can thank the dust for that, and you can thank kind of the motion of that little weak disturbance. We're going to get into the tropical nature of that. Again, it's likely not going to develop, but it doesn't have to to create issues. And I'm going to show you that here with in terms of the rainfall amounts i mean we're talking maybe 100 to 150 centimeters or millimeters of rain i should say that's going to equal to four to five inches of rain through parts of central cuba through sunday afternoon parts of the cayman islands getting in on anywhere from two to three inches of rain maybe up to an inch in montego bay and jamaica and then you see those rain amounts really come down the further east into the caribbean you get Again, partially related to the dust, that dry dust, the air that's going to be dominating the eastern side of the Caribbean. Notice you see that red flare up to several inches of rain likely going to be occurring through the Bahamas as well. Just want to show you to, again, to kind of beat my point in that there's not going to be a ton of rain over this same stretch through Sunday on the eastern side of the Caribbean. You see it there, maybe a quarter of an inch, just a few scattered showers and thunderstorms coming through as they kind of stream in. There is a lot of dry, dusty air out there, and I'm going to show you that in our wide tropical view here, the entire satellite view of the Atlantic Basin coming up in just a little bit closer to the end of the video, so stick around for that. If you're finding this content helpful again, please give it a thumbs up. And if you do like talking about the tropics, again, hit subscribe. We're going to have you updated the entirety of this hurricane season. All right, so now to the actual tropical update. Hurricane Center continues to highlight this little thing near the Azores. It's already bringing some gusty weather, some downpours out there. The waves are getting a little high out there. It doesn't need to be tropical in nature to really cause issues. So there you see over the next two days, Hurricane Center giving it about a 10% shot. Same deal over the next seven days to either acquire some fully tropical characteristics or subtropical characteristics so we're going to be watching for that if it does become subtropical meaning it's that hybrid system gaining some of its strength from the warm ocean water and gaining some of its strength from differences in pressure and temperature in the atmosphere it would get a name it would be brett so that's one of the reasons why we are watching it too of course it is going to impact us from the azores into portugal into spain even parts of the united kingdom nonetheless it would cross the name off the list for the 2023 hurricane season the water not all that warm out here again typically you need to have water temperatures of about 80 degrees or hotter to sustain tropical development you see we don't really have that water temperatures uh, are about 72 degrees 73 closer to the canary islands more like 74 75 we don't really start to get the really warm stuff until you get further back down into the main development region of the Atlantic where we right off the coast of Africa in between there and the lesser Antilles it's warm enough though to gain some so I would suspect if this does develop we're going to be talking about a subtropical system here it is here this is the again vorticity I always like to show this is the low level spin and what we're looking at here I know it's a lot of crazy colors a lot of stuff going on here but basically we're looking for one kind of circular area of red one little ball of red that would really give us a clue here in the model that this is going to try to consolidate right now we have a very large area of counterclockwise flow so it's disorganized it is complex and there are a lot of areas of spin so you see there's like three of those balls all in one three of these big red areas and they kind of pinwheel around each other so that would argue against tropical development because you have a bunch of centers competing now you see them kind of consolidate a little bit this is going to be on the eighth 
So we're starting to get things maybe a little more well-defined here off of the coast of Portugal. As that happens, though, it's going to be getting into waters that are much, much cooler. So we sampled there just a little bit ago, water temperatures in the low 70s. By the time it drifts into further into the North Atlantic, closer to Ireland, closer to the UK, the water temperatures are going to get cooler, and that pretty much is going to shut off any kind of chance that it has to develop any kind of tropical characteristics at all. But you do kind of see it pinwheeling up here, so still kind of a situation that would impact us in the UK, in Ireland, and then, of course, right off the coast here, uh, of Europe, Lisbon, into Portugal, Spain, and then even on the coast of France, we're going to have uh, some nasty weather as well as still dealing with all of the bigger waves in around the Azores. And you kind of see that here with the wave heights. Let me take that back a little bit. That is going to, you kind of see that yellow flare up. It's wave heights anywhere from 9 to 12 feet. That is regardless of this gets a name or not so i want to kind of be clear about that it doesn't matter if it gets a name the impacts are going to be the same around the azores and then around portugal spain and france because of that system i want to kind of zoom out now and show you again the wide view of the atlantic ocean and this is going to be all tied into what we just talked about at the beginning of this video with the saharan dust because we can clearly see where the dust is I'm going to draw it. Notice how there's hardly a cloud in the sky from the Cabo Verde Islands all the way to pretty much Puerto Rico. That is because of that dust that has kind of blown off of the Saharan Desert. It's keeping things stable. The atmosphere is stable. It's keeping things dry. And it's not really allowing thunderstorm development to flourish here. Where we are seeing the thunderstorms again, this is our area that the Hurricane Center has highlighted, that low opportunity. Here is that disturbance that we kind of took a look at, and it's going to bring all the rain. So again, let me get that other circle off of there. Let me move this. But that is moving off of Central America and kind of blowing off. I want to show you another thing, too. Notice how I mentioned earlier about... I don't really think this is going to develop tropically before it hits the Caribbean islands. And the reason for that is you see these kind of white colors extending from the Yucatan Peninsula through the Florida Straits and into the Bahamas. That is the cloud cover from that system really being blown off by a lot of wind shear. So it's evidence to us that we still have a ton of wind shear. The environment is pretty hostile for tropical development right now in the southern Gulf of Mexico and in the western Caribbean. So that's good news for us. Again, regardless, the impacts are going to be the same with some very, very heavy rain in the Western Caribbean there. So that is going to be something that we are watching. We're going to wrap this up by talking about kind of the next seven days, 10 days and beyond. We're showing you another representation of that vorticity, of that spin a couple thousand feet above your, above your head. And there's really nothing concerning here. We have the login, we have the close in look here of the Caribbean. We have a big chunk of high pressure here, that clockwise flow. But what I wanted to show you here, we have the thunderstorms in that kind of ribbon, that intertropical convergence zone that is helping to develop thunderstorms. Notice right here, as we get way out, I mean, this is, again, about seven days out. This is going to be June 13th. Notice we have those two little kind of tightly round areas of red. So the GFS model, anyway, is arguing that we could have some of these thunderstorms that are kind of rolling off the South American continent try to develop a little bit. So it's something that we're going to keep our eyes on. It may be a little bit too far south to get in on some of that wind shear that we just looked at that's blowing there, although we do have a little bit of easterly shear. You see those very, very fast winds at the surface uh, kind of moving that along. So the jury would be out to see if we get any development there. We will keep you posted, but nonetheless... I would expect, regardless, through Panama into Costa Rica, that we could have some really, really heavy rain. Same in for us in Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, as we get towards the June 12th, 13th, 14th time frame. Again, it's a little bit almost 10 days out, 7 to 10 days out, but we will keep you posted on that. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in to this update. Again, if you found this content useful, I hope you did. Hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. And also... Don't forget to subscribe, and if you hit that little alert bell, that's going to allow you to get notifications. When we post new content, you're going to know about it, so that means that you are going to be kind of alerted first. If there's something out there or something 
that is interesting to talk about weather-wise. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day.